President Trump ordering all U.S. troops, roughly a thousand, to withdraw from their positions in northern Syria as Turkey presses ahead with its military operation against Kurdish fighters there. Meanwhile, Turkey's offensive has let off clashes that Syrian officials say so far has let hundreds of ISIS prisoners escape from a camp near a U.S.-led coalition base. Trey Yanks is live from our Mideast Bureau with all the details. Trey? Arthel, major developments in northern Syria this weekend as Turkey continues its advance against the Kurds. Much of what is happening we can't show you. The images are too graphic. But there is evidence today of war crimes being committed, civilians being targeted, and ISIS prisoners escaping. All of this after the Trump administration made a decision to withdraw a group of American forces meant to deter such an invasion from occurring. And today, the U.S. Secretary of Defense, Mark Esper, confirmed that a full U.S. withdrawal from northern Syria is underway. Last night, he directed that we begin a deliberate withdrawal of U.S. forces from the northern part of Syria. Syria. Now, how many people are we talking about? How quickly are they going to move out? We're talking less than 1,000. I can't give you a timeline because it changes hourly. U.S. forces actually came under Turkish fire. Now, to give you a better idea about what is unfolding on the ground, Turkish forces have taken over a number of key roads in the area. On one occasion, a prominent Kurdish politician was stopped, reportedly dragged from the vehicle, and executed on the spot. The worst of humanity is unfolding today in Syria, as President Trump tweets. Congress considers sanctions that wouldn't actually be implemented until a later date, and the world watches. months ago, uh, ISIS lost the last bit of territory it was holding uh, to the Kurdish forces. The, the Kurdish fighters had been doing the heavy lifting in the fight against ISIS over the past few years. During that process, there were thousands of people that um, either were captured or killed or surrendered. The prisoners that were captured during that operation were taken to a number of camps throughout, uh, scattered around northeast Syria that are controlled by the, the Syrian forces, the democratic forces. We went to Syria basically to find as many Canadians as we could um, to find out how they got there. We got access to al Hol camp, which is this uh, sprawling uh, IDP camp, basically, or refugee camp of 70,000 people, um, the vast majority of whom are Iraqi and Syrian. Uh, with a foreigner annex which houses about 11,000 foreign detainees, most of whom are women and children. Now, a hole was originally intended to house 20,000 people. It was expanded to make room for 40,000 people. There's currently 70,000 people. The vast majority of those are children, and the vast majority of the children are under the age of five. The idea that life in the camps will go on and will be untouched and Turkey will somehow come in and take responsibility for the people inside the camps, which is the line we've seen from the U.S. administration, is just completely ludicrous. The situation there will get increasingly um, severe for people inside and outside the camps, and that, again, includes 22 innocent Canadian children that we've abandoned there. Within the camp, there are apparently some very hardcore ISIS elements that are trying to control camp life. They're trying to create uh, basically a mini ISIS state within uh, the camp. And so they have been uh, acting as kind of religious morality police. Um, they've been uh, punishing women who don't follow their code. As soon as we arrived, um, we, were, we were told that there were some uh, tensions uh, inside the camp. Uh, uh, according to the Kurdish authorities, uh, a kind of morality police meeting uh, was interrupted uh, by Kurdish police. Uh, these, in, these women were basically trying to punish uh, a, a fellow woman in the camp. Uh, the, the, this meeting was basically interrupted by Kurdish police and 15 or so women were arrested. At least 70 um, Kurdish police or soldiers 
with AK-47, some of them firing again into the camps and armed vehicles with 50 millimeter cannons actually firing and moving into these camps. This was all taking place when the Kurds had control of the situation. Turkey's bombardment of the area is only going to get worse. It's only going to cause um, ISIS on the outside and on the inside of these camps to regroup. Um, these people are still communicating. It's not like they're cut off from the outside world. They do have cell phones. They are communicating with each other. They do know what's going on. The Kurdish forces do not want to hold these people. Um, they want them to go back to their own countries and face prosecution there. The Kurdish forces told us that, um, you know, if there were some kind of a Turkish offensive, they would realistically have to pull their forces away from the camps and prisons and put them on the front lines. And that would open uh, the risk of escapes or attacks by ISIS on the camps and prisons to try and free uh, you know, the, the members that are being held there. And a lot of these camps and prisons have been active for over a year. Uh, there were ample opportunity to go and repatriate our citizens. Um, I've been twice in the region, uh, have felt safe the whole time. Uh, so this broader argument that the Canadian government often puts forth that the region is unsafe uh, for, uh, for our officials, um, I, I see as largely a political cop out. Um, now, of course, with the Turkish government's kind of encro uh, en encroachment into the region, uh, things are much more unpredictable uh, and indeed much more dangerous. Um, and, and so it, it has become a kind of self-fulfilling prophecy. We kept saying it was too dangerous. Uh, for us to go in, and now it, it has become too dangerous for us to go in. One of the Kurdish uh, uh, leaders I spoke to, um, he described it as disrespectful, that uh, they had done all this fighting on behalf of countries like Canada, and we wouldn't even take the little step of bringing back our citizens that have been captured. If they came to kill us, and they came to kill our kids, and to destroy our towns, actually. So doing nothing toward those citizens, I mean, that's really not respectful, actually, for the, for the sacrifice that we have done. It's much safer to bring them back, prosecute them here, and imprison them here, as opposed to leaving them in a very unstable situation where it's not at all guaranteed that they're still going to be detained weeks or months from now, that they could escape, they could be freed through attacks, and then where will they go? We'll be back to the situation uh, of six months to a year ago where there were a number of Canadians that we didn't know where they were, only that they were in ISIS territory. I think the, the only explanation for Canada's failure when it comes to this situation is a lack of political will. Um, and because it's unpopular domestically and we're in an election year, nobody has the moral courage to stand up and do the right thing, take responsibility for our citizens and our obligations to the international community. New developments in northern Syria. The president ordering all U.S. troops out of the area, about 1,000, according to Defense Secretary Mark Esper. This comes as Turkey presses forward with its offensive against Kurdish fighters amid fears of a mass slaughter of our Kurdish allies and civilians. And now Syrian officials are saying that in the wake of that assault, hundreds of ISIS prisoners have escaped. Trey Yanks, live in Jerusalem with more. Trey? Arthel, good afternoon. Major developments this weekend in northern Syria as Turkey does continue its advance on Kurdish forces. We are getting some breaking news in just now about a deal that has been brokered with the Assad regime. Those Kurdish forces are going to partner with the Syrian regime of Bashar al-Assad. This was brokered by the Russians and all in an effort to try to push back against this Turkish invasion. Here's what we know so far about the deal. It is going to allow Assad forces, these are Syrian government forces, to take control of the entirety of the border between Turkey and Syria. This whole Turkish president Tayyip Erdogan claims that more than 20 Kurdish villages have been taken over by his forces. He added that Turkey will advance around 20 miles into Syria to help maintain the country's territorial integrity. We will divide the terror corridor of 480 kilometers down the middle. We will advance 30 to 35 kilometers into territory suitable to the safe zone map as we declared before. As Turkish airstrikes continue to bombard Kurdish towns over the past few days, U.S. forces actually came under Turkish fire. No American soldiers were injured, but the group had to withdraw from their position. As these bombings take place, the Syrian Democratic Forces say ISIS fighters and family members have escaped a camp and a prison in Syria that were hit with Turkish shellings. 
And today, at least 40 civilian casualties are being reported since the beginning of the operation on the Syrian side, as well as 18 on the Turkish side. The United Nations says 100,000 Syrians have fled amid this new round of violence since it began just last week. To give you an idea of the situation on the ground, Today we are getting reports that Turkish forces and Turkish-backed rebels have taken over some key roads in this region. In one instance, a prominent Kurdish politician was reportedly dragged out of her car and executed on the spot. The worst of humanity is unfolding today in Syria. As President Trump tweets, Congress considers sanctions that wouldn't be put into place until a later date, and the world watches. Arthel? Trey, let me confirm. So you're saying that Kurdish forces are combining with Assad government forces, but not, uh, this is to the exclusion of U.S. backed Kurds. So what we are going to see is a lot of these Kurdish forces who were previously backed by the United States taking over towns that U.S. special forces actually fought alongside these Kurds to take back from the Islamic State. Those Kurdish forces in northeastern Syria are now going to work with the Russians and the regime of Bashar al-Assad. This is a major development because this is exactly what Russian President Vladimir Putin has been trying to do in Syria over a very long period of time. Ultimately get U.S. forces out of the region and then help the Assad regime regain control of this area. What this is going to do is basically uh, vanish the entire Kurdish portion of Syria. They had previously been... Uh, almost a sovereign part of Syria, allowing them to operate within their own governance uh, and the such. But what we are seeing moving forward with this deal that is being brokered with the help of the Russian government is the regime of Bashar al-Assad, which has previously fought many of these Kurdish forces. They're going to be combining and pushing back against uh, this Turkish invasion, trying to secure the border between Syria and Turkey.